Something very strange is happening with them too, and it's catching a lot of us off guard. We're going to unravel exactly what's happening with the U.S. money supply and what this means for virtually all financial markets. Now, when we talk about the money supply, what we're referring to is M2. M1 is cash, checking, and savings accounts, assets that are quickly turned over. M2 is very simply M1 plus other deposits that are easily convertible to cash. That could be the, take the form of CDs, uh, time deposits, money market of funds. We call this near money. Now, M2 and its reported in billions we can see since 2022 through present day has declined precipitously over time. Currently, it stands at, uh, it reads 20,841, but again, that's in billions. So we're actually looking at $20.8 trillion in the current money supply. Now, what affects M2? Several things interest rates, government policy, economic activity. Generally speaking, when interest rates go down, uh, that makes it easier to do business, easier to borrow money, easier to invest. Uh, the money supply goes up. As the money supply goes up, inflation goes up as well. Also, think about our own savings accounts. As interest rates go down, our savings accounts go down. The yield that they would offer us, therefore, gives us the incentive to invest, to take the risk, because we're really not getting paid at all in our savings. Conversely, when interest rates rise, it tends to slow down business. It decreases the amount of money supply out there because for all the cash out there, now we're paying a little bit more in interest. And as the money supply decreases, that also brings down inflation. Now in blue, we see our M2. Again, that's money supply from 2020. Uh, we saw a very, very uh, sharp rise to the upside alongside the CPI, consumer price index, year-over-year -year basis. In other words, our inflation rate. So M2 tends to move in the same direction as inflation. And again, starting in 2020, we saw a massive amount of government programs, which pumped a lot of money into the system that created the inflation that we're battling now. Now, since then, M2 has declined to, uh, to quite some extent, uh, still, relatively speaking, quite high. The inflation rate has also declined to some extent, but again, relatively speaking, still quite high. Now, the histogram bars here show us a consumer price index on a year-over-year -year basis. The red line, it's a zoomed-in view of M2, the money supply. And in particular, what we want to talk about today, and it's a very interesting phenomenon, and it's actually quite unusual. The increase in M2. Why is that? Why is it unusual? The Fed still hasn't cut interest rates. Why is M2 rising? Uh, in the white line, federal funds, that's interest rates from 22 to present day, that they rose quite a bit uh, alongside M2, which declined. They tend to have an opposite or inverse correlation when interest rates go up, which they have, M2 declines. However, interest rates are now steady for quite a while, actually, 5.5%. Why are the latest readings of M2 increasing? What affects M2 again? Interest rates. But interest rates haven't changed. Government policy? Well, you can make a good argument. Government policy, spending programs, uh, you know, printing of all that extra money that has led to an increase in M2. But then again, that is not, that's not really any different. Uh, we also see economic activity. And there's something we'd like to point out, which I think you're going to find interesting that I think most haven't considered. Take a look again. Histogram bars show us M2, the red line, the U.S. Treasury bond market. This is in yield, by the way. Now, in particular, notice what's happened over the past couple months. Treasury yields have risen alongside M2. You see, again, when we think about a rise in, in M2, we initially think, oh, the Federal Reserve must have cut interest rates, but they haven't. Well, we would think, well, maybe there's more money in the system because there's more you know, spending or there's more government programs, but that hasn't really changed. So what has caused M2 to spike? It very well could be the Treasury market. See, this is our theory. Number one, 
Sticky inflation. We know this last week. We got the PCE numbers. Inflation is back on the rise. Because inflation is on the rise, the Federal Reserve won't cut interest rates. Those high interest rates are leading us to a bear market in the bonds. See, when bond prices go down, bond yields go up. We just saw the one-year bond yield rising over the past few months. That's actually indicative of bond prices going down. Now, bond prices going down means there's more traders selling bonds than buying bonds. That adds cash to the marketplace. You see, as investors are selling bonds, that's causing the spike. This is our theory, causing the spike in M2. Now, Histogram bars again show us M2, this time U.S. Treasury uh, yields on the 10-year bond. Same correlation, so it's not maturity specific. We can see over the past couple months, M2 has really started to spike alongside those higher yields. And again, to recap, what's happening is the sticky inflation is causing the Federal Reserve not to cut rates. The Federal Reserve not cutting rates is keeping those bond yields high. The bond market is really just following the Federal Reserve's cue. Well, as yields go up, especially on the short term, the one-year bond, you know, that's causing a lot of selling within the bond market. Traders are selling their treasuries. When they sell the treasuries, they receive cash. Now there's more cash in the savings accounts, in the checking accounts, in the time deposits, and you know all those other instruments, the near money. As a result, M2 spiking. So what can we expect moving forward? What's the value in knowing all this? Well, number one, inflation will persist. Of course, past performance is not indicative of future results. But if history is any judge and we continue under the conditions that we see right now, we know that M2 is increasing as a result, our theory of selling in the bond markets. Well, the selling in the bond market's not going to stop as long as the Federal Reserve is not near cutting interest rates. Well, the Federal Reserve is not near cutting interest rates as long as we see inflation where it is. It's a case of which came first, the chicken or the egg, or which came first, the sticky inflation or the M2. Number two, stocks tend to rise alongside inflation. And this is actually the silver lining. You know, the inflation is not easy to tolerate, certainly. However, for those of us in the stock market, the stock market really does seem to like this inflationary cycle. Notice at the beginning of 2024 this year, the S&P 500 here shown in red uh, jumped to the upside alongside that spike in M2. You see, when there's more cash out there, we tend to see more speculative behavior in stocks in commodities. We've seen a recent uh, bump up in gold and silver as well. So we see more speculative behavior when we see more cash out there within the marketplace. Now, the Fed has a dilemma. We know this from the economic calendar last week. PCE, personal consumption expenditure, inflation is on the rise. Meanwhile, new home sales, they can't compete with the rising inventories. GDP, that's only 1.6%. In fact, we took a deep dive into the data from last week's economic calendar. It's a perfect example of what the Fed's facing right now. Uh, have a look at your leisure. I think you'll find our analysis quite interesting. Cryptocurrencies as well. 